What's up everyone, back with another video. So today I want to talk about something that I get asked quite a bit. So this is how much muscle and strength will I lose when I'm away from the gym? So this video is going to be mostly based in science, but is also going to be based in my experience over the past 10 weeks or so that I have been sadly gymless. Now, as you can imagine, there have been quite a few studies on this, but keep in mind that a scientific study is just trying to tell you the average. They take a group of people, they put them under a set of circumstances, then they test what happens to the average person. With any kind of effect like this, whether it's muscle loss or muscle gain or strength gain, strength loss, etc., there's going to be a bell curve. So some people might lose nothing, other people might lose a lot, and everyone else is going to be sort of near the middle. Now this is important because you are an individual. So keep in mind that you might react slightly different than these numbers. However, I will try to give you some information about what causes some people to gain or lose more muscle faster. Now, first let's go into strength. Now, strength obviously has a muscular component, but there's also some other components, mainly the central nervous system. On some movements, you have to practice them more in order to keep your strength. So for example, the clean and jerk is a remarkably complicated movement. You're taking a bar and then you have to put it in a very precise location and then you have to throw it above your head and you're, if you're off by even an inch, you're just gonna miss the lift. Whereas something like a deadlift is a lot less technical. So basically you just have to pick something off the ground. Yes, there is technique involved, but generally speaking, it's a lot simpler. So basically, the more complicated a movement is, the more often you have to practice it. If you don't deadlift for two weeks, you could come back and be just as strong. If you don't clean and jerk for two weeks, <laughs> then you cannot expect to be just as strong. You will probably lose strength just because you are not as in practice, in tune. This is part of the reason why musicians often have to practice quite often if they want to be, you know, at, their, at the top of their game just because it's a very technical, very complicated thing that uses a lot of mental energy. It's the same thing for weightlifting to a certain extent. But generally speaking, I would say two weeks, you will lose no strength for most movements, most exercises. Three weeks, you might lose some strength. Four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, this is when you will absolutely start to notice a loss of strength in most cases. And then beyond that, it just gets worse and worse, you lose more and more strength. There are ways to mitigate this, but generally speaking, if you don't bench press for a long time, you're gonna get worse at bench pressing. Now, one good thing is that the longer you've been training, the longer you will keep your strength. So if you've been training for five years, six years, 10 years, 12 years, you will keep your strength a lot longer than someone who has been training for just a few months. In fact, they've done studies where someone trained for, I think it was seven weeks, and they stopped training and they went back to as if they had never trained very, very quickly. Whereas if you have that base over a long period of time, your body is much more likely to keep that strength and to keep that muscle. Another factor is older people. The older you are, the quicker you will lose strength. That's just how it is due to just the actual age of you and hormones, mostly. Now, in terms of muscle loss, you might think that you lose it in like a week. But generally speaking, this isn't the case. Uh, a lot of what you actually lose is not muscle fiber. It's not actual contractile tissue. It is glycogen or even just inflammation. When you train, your muscle gets all, it's like the pump, basically. Your muscle gets inflamed and bigger and swollen. There's a lot of water in there, a lot of just bloat. When you stop training, that tends to go down. So your muscles might shrink. This isn't muscle loss, especially if it's just one or two weeks. Your muscles are smaller, I guess you could say, but it's not actual muscle loss. Most data that I looked at, it said that around three weeks is when you'll start to lose actual muscle fiber, actual contractile tissue. Um, it might be about 5% after three to four weeks. And then as you keep, you know, not training, it's going to go down to about 35% after six months. So obviously that's quite a lot of muscle, but six months with no training, that's zero weightlifting, completely sedentary. So if you're completely sedentary, 
you kind of deserve that. And I'm kind of surprised that you don't lose more because your body really has no reason to keep that muscle. Now, in terms of my experience, before all this <laughs> coronavirus stuff, I was around 90 to 92 kilos. And now I'm roughly 86 to 87 kilos. And my body fat hasn't really changed. I haven't dieted, I haven't bulked, I've just sort of maintained, but I've still lost about four to five kilos of weight. And most people, if you say, oh, I lost five kilos, they're like, oh, good job, congratulations. But as, you know, a bodybuilder, as a gym goer, that feels horrible. But I don't feel that bad because I know that it'll come back fast due to muscle memory, which is a real thing. When you lose muscle, you lose the actual muscle fiber, but you keep the nuclei of the muscle fibers. And so when you start training again, you can regain that muscle and that strength very quickly. So if you have lost muscle after one, two or three months, don't worry too much. It does come back fast if you work hard and you have the stimulus to regain it. Now, keep in mind, this is talking about complete detraining. So this is when you do nothing. And of course, that's not something you have to do. You can still train at home with bodyweight exercises, with home workouts, with calisthenics, that kind of thing. So you don't have to be completely sedentary. That is a choice. And you can avoid that. I would say if you do bodyweight exercises, you can maintain most of your muscle, especially for the upper body. I don't think I've lost any size in my arms, in my, in my chest, in my back. Maybe a little bit, but certainly, you know, I haven't withered away. So you can maintain through these bodyweight exercises, even if they're not the barbell, even if they're not dumbbells, they can still be an excellent stimulus to keep you maintaining or even gaining. That's another factor. If you're a beginner, you can absolutely still gain muscle, for sure. If you're intermediate, probably still you can make gains. If you're advanced or elite, that's when it becomes you know, you're lucky to maintain. It's also gonna come down to other factors. So if you are not eating very much protein, that will increase your chance of muscle loss. If you are in a caloric deficit, also you're probably gonna lose muscle. Those are both very important factors when it comes to your diet. Sleep, get plenty of sleep. If you get like four or five hours a night, that will definitely increase your chances of losing muscle. Uh, but cardio, you can do a bit and it won't have too much of an effect, but if you do too much cardio, yeah, you're gonna lose muscle and it's gonna be faster. If you look at most marathoners, they're skinny. <laughs> they're skinny because that much running is very catabolic and it will actually break down your muscle tissue to use as fuel. Another big factor is genetics. A lot of people don't like to talk about genetics, but it is extremely important. Um, I know a guy who, he didn't train for like two or three months and then he posted some selfie in a group I was in and it looked the same. <laughs> like really no different at all and he just has good genetics he's been training a long time he's able to take that time off without any big repercussions whereas other people they would notice a negative effect pretty quickly but for him you know his diet is on point his genetics are good he's been training a long time and so he can get away with it whereas other people might not be able to also keep in mind that just your general health and your general activity level do have a big impact if you feed someone protein that is marked biologically, so they can basically track where it goes in the body through a scanner. If you give someone protein and they are sleeping, it does not absorb as well as if they are walking. So if you give someone protein and you force them to walk, it will actually enter the muscles and be digested a lot more efficiently. And so this can help you retain and maintain muscle. Whereas if you just eat protein and then you sit down or you lie down, it won't be processed as efficiently. And this can actually lead to muscle loss. So it's not just about how much protein you're getting, it's how much protein you are using that is important. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below, I'm happy to help. And uh, keep in mind this is just temporary. So it's important to realize that this isn't gonna be forever. Just try to maintain as best you can, deal with the situation in a mature and wise manner, um, for me, it's been 10 weeks, but you know, it is what it is. I can't really change it. So there's not too much point in stressing out about it. Just do the best you can, take care of your health, take care of your family, your friends, and uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.